Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 45 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We have been doing the quantitative analysis of elements in an organic compound. And by now we have done the quantitative analysis of carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen. So let us now come to the next element or group of elements that we will be dealing with and those are halogens. The halogens in organic compounds usually are chlorine, bromine or iodine. So how do we estimate them? You already know how the qualitative analysis of these is done. We are now going to do the quantitative analysis. If you remember, in the case of halogens, we prepared the silver halide of these uh, compounds. We do the same, but this is now known as the Karius method and it's done in a special apparatus which is known as the Karius tube. You know, we prepared the silver halide and you had studied that um, when we prepare the silver halide, if the silver halide that is formed, it is a precipitate, it's a solid. If it is white in color, then it's, it indicates the presence of chlorine. If it is yellow in color, pale yellow in color, it indicates the presence of bromine. But what confirms it that if it is sparingly soluble in ammonium hydroxide, then it is bromine. But if it forms a yellow precipitate, which is insoluble, absolutely insoluble in ammonium hydro hydroxide, then it is iodine. Once we find out that these, the whichever halogen is present in the uh, compound, the next uh, step would be to find out what is the mass of this halogen in it and then calculate the mass percentage for which we do the quantitative analysis and hence the Karius method. So let me now explain the Karius method to you. In the Karius method, which is carried out in this, it's called Karius method because this tube also is known as the Karius tube. What we do is we convert the compound again to its halide and we do it in such a way that the carbon and hydrogen of the hydrocarbon is we get rid of it uh, in the process, in the process itself where it gets vaporized and we lose it. So a known mass, we always need to know what mass of organic compound we are starting with because we have to find out what mass out of the total mass of the compound is the mass of the halogen. So we take a known mass of the organic compound, which in every case we are taking it as M, small m, and it is heated with fuming nitric acid in the presence of silver nitrate in a carious tube. You see, this is a carious tube. It's a long tube. It has got double walls. You can see that. It is 2 centimeter wide and it is 50 centimeter long. And in this, just as you have, you know, the ignition tube in which you, would pre you prepare the sodium extract, Similarly, there is a small little tube in which you put the organic compound and you dip that compound in the carious tube and you dip it in the carious tube. What do you take? You take a mixture of silver nitrate and fuming nitric acid. Under these conditions, the silver halide is formed. Once not only is silver halide formed, the hydrogen gets oxidized to, uh, in the presence of nitric acid, which is an oxidizing agent, it gets converted into water and uh, the carbon which is present would get converted into carbon dioxide, both of which are gases and both of which would escape from the carrier's tube. And what you're left with is basically, or even if it doesn't escape into the atmosphere, it is still not uh, going to disturb us because you're going to get the silver halide in the precipitate form. So the precipitate is a solid which has been mixed in a liquid and it just stays mixed because um, because it is present in a solution. So it is very easy to simply wash off the uh, precipitate in a little water, separate it out by filtration, and then you dry up the filter paper and then what you get is purely the silver halide. Once you get the silver halide, you will now weigh it exactly. And when, when you know the weight of the silver halide, exact weight of silver halide, so you know the original mass of the compound, you know how much of silver halide was formed. From the uh, what molecular mass of the silver halide, you can, uh, using the mole concept, you can tell what would be the mass of the halogen if this is the mass of the silver halide. And from that, we will calculate its uh, its mass percentage as we have done for the other elements. So a known mass of the organic compound is heated with fuming nitric acid in the presence of silver nitrate in a carious tube in a furnace. The carbon and hydrogen in the furnace at that temperature would be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water, that is water vapor. 
the halogen will or water or water vapor even if it is present in the solution form it dissolves in it yet uh, it will be separated from it the halogen forms the silver halide this will be filtered it will be washed it will be dried and then you only have silver halide which will be weighed let us say that the mass of the organic compound is m grams the mass of the silver halide formed is m1 grams then the mass of silver is 108 the molar mass of uh, or atomic mass of silver is 108 and the atomic mass of uh, masses of chlorine bromine and iodine chlorine is 35.5 bromine is 80 and iodine is 127 so knowing you will know the molecular mass you know the molecular mass of uh, or the gram formula mass of the silver halide from that you will calculate the mass of the halogen present so one mole of silver halide will contain one mole of the halogen so whatever is the mass of one mole taking the molar masses you will then calculate it for that if one mole has this much of halogen the molecular mass of halogen if you have one mole of silver halide then it has 35.5 grams of chlorine it has 80 grams of bromine one mole whatever is the mass of one mole of that halogen it has that so if it has you'll use unitary method and you'll find out that what would be the mass of the halogen present in m1 grams of the halide of the silver halide so you will calculate the mass of silver how would you do that mass of halogen in m1 grams of the silver halide would be atomic mass of the halogen into m1 grams upon molecular mass of agx let me just do this uh, for you here so we have found out the molecular mass of silver halide right let us say silver is 108 and um, bromine is 80 so let us say the the halide is agbr okay this the molar mass is 188 and whatever is the mass is m1 of the silver halide so we'll say one mole of silver halide or in one mole or in 188 grams of sil silver bromide agbr the mass of the mass of bromine is equal to 80 grams so in one gram how much would it be upon the molar mass that is uh, what is the molar mass 188 and in m1 grams how much would it be into m1 from this you will calculate the mass of bromine and from the mass of bromine now that you know this is the mass of bromine that is present in m1 gram of silver bromide but this bromine was given out or was present in how much of the compound in m grams of the compound so now we'll say in m grams of the compound the bromine is 80 upon 188 into m1 and or if we generalize this and not call it just bromine and take it just as the halogen so we'll say it is the atomic mass atomic mass of the halogen of halogen upon molecular mass molecular mass of x x is usually halogens are represented by the alphabet x into m1 which is the mass of the silver halide m grams of the compound has these many grams of the halogen so one gram will have upon m into m and 100 grams will have into 100 which will give you the percentage right so we'll say atomic mass of x into m1 gram upon molecular mass of agx will give you the mass of the halogen in m1 grams of uh, the silver um, silver halide so we'll say this is the um, amount of silver also present in m grams of the compound so from that we will calculate the percentage the mass percentage of the halogen so if the mass percentage of the halogen would be the atomic mass this mass the mass in um, in m grams of the compound for one gram it will be divided by m and for 100 grams it will be into 100 therefore that will give you the percentage of the halogen so after having understood this let us now solve this uh, numerical problem which is a solved example again of your textbook which will make this clear again let me read the question in Carrier's method of estimation of halogen 0.15 grams of an organic compound gave 0.12 grams of silver bromide 
you have to find out the percentage of bromine in the compound. So, in Carrier's method of estimation, what is the mass of the compound? M is 0 0.15 grams of the organic compound. It gave 0 0.12 gram of AGBR. So, M1 is equal to 0 0.12 grams. You have to find out the percentage of bromine. So, uh, what we calculate the mass of silver bromide. AGBR, one mole. What is the mass? AGBR weighs 108 is silver, 80 is uh, bromine. So, 188 is the is the mass of silver bromide 188 grams right so in 188 grams in 188 grams of AGBR bromine is 80 grams okay so in one gram of AGBR what will be the amount of bromine therefore in one gram of AGBR bromine would be equal to 80 upon 188 and what is the value of m1 m1 is 0 point therefore in 0 0.12 grams of agbr bromine would be into 0 0.12 right this will give you the mass we have to find out the percentage now so this is also 80 upon 188 into 0 0.12 is also the mass of grams is also the mass of AGBR in the compound. How much of the compound? 0 0.15 grams of the compound. So we'll say again use unitary method. In 0 0.15 gram of the organic compound, the mass of bromine is equal to 80 upon 188 into 0 0.12 so in one gram how much would it be divided by 0 0.15 and in 100 grams how much would it be into 100 that is how you would calculate the mass percentage and when you calculate this this will come out to be equal to 34.04 34.04 percent that would be the mass percentage of bromine in the compound right so after having done the Geldal's method Dumas method and the methods that we have done for uh, carbon and hydrogen and since we have been doing this uh, the same calculation and again and again it becomes very easy for you to now understand the carrier's method so I'll not pull this further with this, I'll wind up the video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.